Happy Monday, everyone. This is Martha with Nature Niche. And this week, I want to focus on one of 13 species of frog and toads in Michigan, the wood frog. The wood frog is native to the near Arctic region, uh, south to Georgia and Alabama, across the northeastern United States, um, and all across Canada into Alaska. It is the um, northernmost um, reptile or amphibian species that occurs in North America. Its habitat includes temporary or um, permanent woodland pools. You can find it in ditches and wetlands adjacent to wooded areas. Uh, more broadly, it occurs in tundra ecosystems, thickets, wet meadows, um, bogs, and both coniferous and deciduous or mixed forests. It tends to migrate from its primary habitat uh, to fish-free uh, seasonal or semi-permanent water bodies, also known as vernal pools, uh, where they breed. Um, and lay egg masses in the water. And this species hibernates in terrestrial or upland locations uh, that may or may not be near uh, these important breeding wetlands. This species is one of the earliest frogs to call and uh, they have the shortest breeding season, only about two to three weeks long. And in Michigan, in southern Michigan, uh, end of March is when they might start and run through mid-April in northern Michigan. And the call of the males is a hoarse, low-pitched croaking. Uh, some people describe it more like the quacking of um, ducks or um, sort of a chortling. Um, and it has little carrying capacity. So a soft, squeaky uh, type of croaking call that can be easy to miss if you're listening at a distance. This call is often heard before um, the ice is melted off of the pond surfaces. As far as identification goes, this is a smaller frog, um, 1.4 inches to 3.3 inches long, with the females being larger than the males. There are a number of color morphs, um, brown, gray-brown, bronze, reddish, or tan are most common. Um, background color, but there may be green or gray as well. And the important identifying feature is the dark brown black mask running from the eye over the circular ear type structure, the tympanum, uh, to the shoulder, and then the white stripe along the upper lip. The males are darker in color during the breeding season and it may make that mask hard to see. Um, they can have dark spots along each dorsal fold, which is the raised ridge of skin that you can see running um, along each side of the back. Um, those black spots might also occur on the sides and they may have dark bands on their hind legs. They're white beneath and um, they become more kind of pale orange yellow towards the rear and the males may have even brighter colors on the underside of their legs. Um, during the breeding season the males uh, tend to have thickened thumbs for grasping the females and um, they have paired vocal sacs uh, evidenced by folds of skin uh, between their jaw and their shoulder from the uh, breeding calls. The tadpoles can be up to 1.8 inches long 
and they have plump, short, high tail fin. Um, the body's brown or olive with black and gold specks um, with a lighter tail that might have some black spots. The eggs are laid in the water in globular masses of 1,000 to 3,000, and um, they're attached to twigs or submerged vegetation or sometimes free-floating in the wa water. Um, development is dependent upon water temperature, and um, hatching from the egg may take 10 to about 30 days. Um, if the water is colder and metamorphosis occurs 65 to 135 days uh, post hatching from the egg. So um, the males tend to reach um, sexual maturity in one to two years, females a little bit longer at two to three years. Uh, they breed explosively in the spring when the first warm rains occur. Um, it's cold and uh, the short period makes it easy to miss them during surveys um, and underestimate populations. It is a diurnal species that migrates late winter, early spring from uplands to breeding sites. Um, individuals are pretty uh, site specific going back, have heights site fidelity and go back to um, the same breeding ponds year after year. And although they gather at these aquatic breeding locations, it's generally a solitary species the rest of the year. Adults eat a variety of terrestrial insects and other small invertebrates, especially spiders, beetles, moth larvae, slugs, and snails. The tadpoles eat algae, um, decaying plant and animal matter in the water, um, eggs, or the larvae of other amphibians. Uh, the adults serve as prey for larger frogs, garter ribbon and water snakes, herons, uh, raccoons, skunks, mink, even smaller mammals like shrews. And the tadpoles can be prey for Things like diving beetles, water bugs, and certain salamander larvae. The eggs may be eaten by aquatic insects, eastern newts, and leeches. So they're an important part of the food web. Um, they have some interesting uh, anti-predator mechanisms, including the adults um, have noxious skin secretions that may deter smaller predators like shrews. Uh, but they mostly rely on camouflage to blend into the forest floor. And they may emit a piercing cry when grabbed that startles predators enough to release them. And older tadpoles um, have poison glands to help repel predators as well. This species uses cryogenic freezing process during hibernation. Uh, 35 to 45 percent of the body may freeze, turn to ice. The frog's uh, breathing, uh, blood flow, and heartbeat cease. And this freezing is possible because of specialized proteins and glucose, which prevent intracellular freezing and dehydration. Um, it is a relatively abundant and widespread species, although. Um, it is experiencing habitat loss as woodlands are converted to agriculture and suburban development, and the breeding ponds are drained or filled, uh, road or other types of uh, habitat fragmentation um, can really harm populations as they're killed trying to migrate uh, to and from their breeding ponds. Um, acid rain and toxic runoff into the ponds um, is also a problem. And in general, amphibians are really great indicators of environmental health. Um, and so where you, where you see that uh, pollution and habitat destruction, that will um, translate to lower populations relatively quickly. And I just wanted to remind everyone that uh, reptiles and amphibians are still active in the fall 
and uh, make sure you're monitoring your window wells and watching out for them on the roads. Um, if you want to learn more about monitoring and retrofitting your window wells, check out Monday with Martha number 48. And I hope you get to see some of these really cute uh, wood frogs on your next walk through the woods. Take care and have a good week.